Hey everybody, welcome to a, another episode of Tuesday Talks. And today I thought I would talk a little bit about movement. Um, because although many of you might see that I'm quite active now, there was a point only about five or six years ago when there were some days when I struggled to walk. And I thought maybe it would be helpful for me to share with you how I got from being in a place where I could some days barely move to where I am now um, teaching uh, fitness classes in multiple formats. So uh, maybe you find something helpful in, in this chat. Um, because now I feel pretty great. I feel pretty lean, energetic. I feel pretty strong. And although there's a lot more uh, that I will accomplish, um, I'm quite proud of how mobile I am now. And I will tell you a bit of a spoiler alert here. It did not happen overnight. And what I'm gonna share with you isn't particularly glamorous. It's not like I found one thing and I did it for three weeks and all of a sudden I could walk again and I didn't have any discomfort. It's an ongoing um, process. And uh, I wouldn't even call it a process, more of a journey. And I'm discovering new things that I can do all the time. So here's what I did. So first of all, I started out with food first because when I was looking at this as like a whole journey in terms of health improvement, what research tells us is that 80% uh, of our health is, is how we fuel our bodies and what we eat. So I really wanted to get the food figured out first. And also because my mobility was so bad, like my knees, I had a lot of pain in my knees. Um, and I still do struggle with, with some knee stuff, but I found things that, that have helped. So um, whatever it is that you're experiencing, there's a way that we can get you moving and reducing any aches and pains that you might have. I'm quite confident. So anyways, I started with food and I had a baby at home and three other kids. So like, what am I going to do? And so I thought, well, maybe I like dancing. Actually, here's a really funny story. So I was watching Chicago Fire. I love Chicago Fire. And I had before done some other movement practice because I've said to you before, I've always been active. But the truth is that I've, I've not always liked being active. There were certain things that I found that I liked and then other things that I did because I felt like I had to or I should. So um, when I started all of this, I wasn't really doing anything. And I had heard of Zumba, but I was like, oh, I've heard that's bad for your knees. I heard it's really high impact. I don't know. I don't think that that's something that would really fit for me. But I love dancing, I love music. So I'm sitting there watching Chicago Fire and Joe Cruz, one of the firefighters, teaches Zumba on the side. And I'm watching it and I turned to my husband and I said, well, that looks like fun, I wanna do it. So it's thanks to Chicago Fire, actually, and Joe Cruz that I'm a Zumba instructor and all of that, that was a little sidebar. Anyhow, but I wasn't brave enough to go to a class by myself. So what I did is I, found on YouTube a 20 minute Zumba type class. And I did it when the kids were napping. And um, it was hard, you know? It was hard to jump around at that, uh, at that weight, carrying that extra weight. So I didn't, I modified it heavily, like really, really heavily, no jumping, no jumping at all. Uh, very little twisting. I did what I could, as much as I could, and I did that for a little while and then I thought, well, you know, just over here they have a class. Maybe I'll sign up. And I was actually taking uh, my son to uh, Taekwondo there. So, and Zumbini, that's the other thing we were doing. We were doing a little music class for kids. So I would poke in, I'm like, oh, it's not a very big class. Okay, I'll sign up. I went every other week because a kid was sick or I wasn't feeling up to it or whatever. So I went every other week to Zumba. And again, like really heavily modified. Then I worked up to once a week and I was going once a week pretty consistently. And then I added in a second time a week, but we're talking, this is months, right? It was like months I did once a week. And then I added a second time a week. And that first time I'm like, ooh, I feel it. So I backed up and then I tried it again a little bit, a little bit later. Then I intermittently added a third time a week because it was summertime and it was conflicting with stuff in the house. 
And then I just started going three times a week. And by that point, it'd become almost more about seeing my friends and hanging out with people than it really was about moving. So I got up to about that point and then I decided, well, what about the days I'm not moving? So I thought, well, and again, I'm still modifying in all of these Zumba classes. This is why I'm so passionate about modifications in my own classes. People say, well, you offer lots of different modifications. I sure do, because I want everybody to be able to participate. I'm not interested at this point, and I don't know that I ever will be about like training elite athletes. That's not who gets me fired up. Who I'm interested in teaching and working with um, are, are people who, who, who want that those options where maybe they're starting at um, you know the easiest modification um, compared to you know say average and then they're going to work their way up that's exciting right not to say that i wouldn't be interested in in training people that are already quite athletic and i do have especially in my strong classes i have some some women who holy smokes i they keep me on my toes because they can do as much or more than I can. I really have to make sure that I'm providing them challenges, but that's what's exciting, is having this wide range of people and being able to help everybody keep moving. So anyhow, I decided to add in some short walks. Now I'm talking, I started a 15 minute walk in the morning and then worked up to about half an hour on the days I wasn't doing Zumba. And sometimes I would do it even on the days I was doing Zumba because at that point the walk wasn't about burning calories or getting my exercise minutes in or getting my steps in. It was about going and looking over Fish Creek Park and taking a big breather and just being happy with the fact that I was able to do that because there was one point in my life when I wouldn't have been able to do that. So, you know, I, I really did do it quite slowly and then it was after I lost quite a bit of weight that I added in more strength training and the, the strong. Um, because I had some excess skin and I thought, well, let's fill that with a bit of muscles. And it definitely did help, but I've also really enjoyed the feeling of being stronger. Um, I, I remember at one point coming across the quote, no matter how slow you are going, you are still lapping everybody on the couch. Yeah, I love that quote. I thought it was, I think it's fantastic. I remind myself of that, especially when I'm starting something new. Like I just started teaching bar and the first couple times I did it, it was really, really hard. I'm like, I, I teach hit three times a week. This should be easy, different muscles, right? But you know what? Me doing it as well as I could, as much as I could is better than me not doing it at all, right? I can remember when I was heavier, I almost felt embarrassed about being active. Like I had to get to a certain point in terms of like feeling like I was in shape to be able to be seen being active. I don't even know if that makes sense to you, but I was embarrassed. And, and part of it was very practical. Part of it was like, what am I gonna wear? In the last five years even, they've done a really nice job of adding some plus sizes to active wear clothing. But for a while there, it was pretty abysmal. It was like you got Old Navy or got Walmart and that was about it. Now Under Armour and different places like this are, are making good active wear for people of all sizes. But part of, it, part of it was that and then part of it was just also, yeah, feeling embarrassed about it. And I realize now how ridiculous that, that was because when I see people of all different shapes and sizes and different levels of conditioning moving, I almost wanna like go up and give them a high five and be like, yes, you do it. You're doing awesome, keep going, you know? Um, instead of feeling like, I, yeah. So I kind of wish, I wish that that wasn't the case for me. And I wonder how many people out there also feel that way. And I also wonder if that's why sometimes, you know, um, the virtual classes are a nice option because I've had people say to me, um, I would have felt too intimidated or too embarrassed to come to your class in person, but I can do it here because you can't see me huffing and puffing or you can't see me sweating or you can't see me doing only half of the set. What they don't know is that I would be cheering them on like crazy. And I am in my classes, even when they're virtual. But um, so that's something to keep in mind. Even if you are 
slowly walking around your block, you are going way faster than anybody that is sitting on the sofa. I also came to realize that two things cannot be true at the same time. I cannot like sit on, sit down and not take any steps towards being in better shape and at the same time wish that I was in better shape. Like nobody was going to like come with a magical wand and say, and now you can move better. In order for me to feel good moving, I needed to do things that felt good when I moved. So I found things that I really, really liked, yeah? Um, so, and, and that changed for me over time because if you would have said to me five years ago, hey, you wanna do something super fun, let's do a one hour HIIT workout where I'm gonna take you to the point where you can hardly have a conversation with somebody and you're gonna be jumping around and you're gonna be doing all these, th I would have said, that is not fun, that does not sound good, that will, and that will not feel good for me. So this is the other reason why I try and offer lots of different options because I want you to find something that feels good. You like dancing, you like punching, you like playing, like what do you like to do? I've got a little bit of, and also the other thing is then it make, it helps reduce the risk of injury for those of you that are doing many, many things. Switch it up. Don't do the same thing. Like I know I'm gonna tell you in a minute, find something you love, but you don't wanna find something you love and then do it to the point where you're, where you're hurting yourself because that can happen if you're doing the same thing over and over again. We see it with people who love running. We see it with people who love Zumba and do Zumba five days a week. And then they're like, oh, but my, my knees or my back or whatnot. It's because we really do, mixing it up is great. Okay, so we need to move. And like I said, what feels good for your body will change over time as the condition of your body changes. But we need to sort of think about what are the things that you really, really like to do, you know? So, and sometimes people are like, okay, but I really want results. Like, it's really good that you're saying, what do you like to do? Well, I know some of you, but what do I like to do? I like to watch Netflix. Okay, well, I do too but we're not gonna feel good in these bodies if we don't move them because they were designed for movement. Complex system of joints, muscles, ligaments, tendons, all controlled by a nervous system. It was designed to move around, yes? Um, in three dimensions, like how cool is that, right? So we gotta use it or we're gonna lose it. I know, it's cheesy, but it's true. So I know you're like, okay, well, what I really like to do is sit around. That's what I really like to do on my patio with a beverage. You know what? If I said to you, you can, don't move. It won't, it, it won't make a difference either way, which isn't true. But let's say I said that. Then maybe a week, right? Even you've been on vacation. You're like, I'm just going to lay around on a beach lounger all week. By the end of the week, you're like, oh man, I really got to get up. I really got to move around. The other thing I hear a lot is, but I want results. Like I want something that's really gonna work. Consistency over intensity. Intensity doesn't work right out of the gate, especially if you're not somebody that's used to moving, right? So people are like, okay, I'm gonna do it. And then they go and do it and then they're sore or they hurt themselves and then that's it. They burn out. So that's what's gonna happen. If you go in, all gut, like both guns blazing, is you're not gonna last. You're gonna burn out fast. You're gonna stall out. It's it's so, we're in it for the long game, remember? This isn't, there's no rush, there's no race, there's no urgency. This is the long game. This is like daily care over a long period of time, okay? I see this, I see this all the time when they're like, I'm gonna do it. It's usually in January or September and they sign up for all the classes and the gym and it, it doesn't last for more than a week or two. Exercise should really be a celebration of what your body can do and not a punishment for what you ate or a punishment for anything, right? Punishments suck. If I tell my kids, let's go weed the garden. They're like, okay, super fun. Now, if I'm like, you know what? As a punishment, you have to weed my garden. Well, all of a sudden it's not fun anymore. Well, we're the same way. If we think of it as something we have to do or else, this one big ultimatum, no, no, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be horrible. We gotta find stuff we really love, okay? So how are you framing exercise? How are you framing movement? How are you talking about it to yourself and to other people? Remember, language is really important. Okay, so what do you like to do? We already talked about it. I know everybody likes Netflix, it's fine. But what do you like to do with your body, right? Because here's the thing. 
If you like sitting and that's what you really like doing, well, I hope you like it a whole lot because your hip flexors are gonna tighten up, your lower back is gonna get sore and fast forward a decade or two and you're gonna to struggle to stand and to walk, okay? You ever try going to the bathroom when you can't stand by yourself? I'll just leave you with that. We gotta use it or we're gonna lose it. So, it doesn't have to be intense. It doesn't have to be horrible. But when I started, I thought, you know what? In order for me to lose the amount of weight that I need to lose, I'm gonna need to become a marathon runner and I hate running. Turned out that was not true. There's all kinds of things that you can do that do not involve things you do not like to do, okay? It can be fun. Anything that isn't sitting is movement, all right? It doesn't even have to look like exercise. Let's not even call it that, okay? We're gonna just call it movement. It doesn't even have to look like exercise. It doesn't need to be a gym, all right? So first of all, let's think back to when you were a kid. What did you like to do? Did you like jumping? Did you like biking, dance, martial arts? What kind of things did you find fun to do? Now, movement should be like play for grownups. It really should. Like when, when my kids are like, and I, I say, I'm going to the fitness depot, and they say, what's that? I say, it's kind of like a toy store for mummies because we have all kinds of fun things. We can get some balls, all kinds of things, right? And I know I'm kind of a weirdo like that, and uh, I never thought I would be, but who knows? Who knows? You find the right thing, you might also be able to look at it more like play and less like work. That is my hope, all right? It gives us a chance to shake our sillies out, to decompress, to think or not think, right? To get out of our head. Sometimes people find it a time when they can be reflective depending on what they're doing. But if you like jumping, I'm not saying like go and hump, hop on a trampoline, although you, you could if you wanted to, but find something that combines elements of what you like. So, I, that's, I've mentioned strong a couple of times already in this talk, but I like it because um, I can do jumping in that as part of it. I didn't know that I liked jumping until I tried doing a jumping jack after I'd lost about a hundred pounds and was like, wow, I can actually do a jumping jack. Now I want a jumping jack everywhere, right? So as we, as this is, a, again, this is a work in progress, right? Um, and so find experiences that add elements of what you like. If you like dancing, find some sort of a program that includes dancing. If you like martial arts, it doesn't have to be that you're gonna sign up and take judo. It could be that you're gonna find a kickboxing class or you're gonna try out a boxing studio. Um, you know, do you like, if you like biking, do you like biking inside or outside? Can you find a used bike on Kijiji and give it a go, right? So anything that isn't sitting is movement and moving our joints. So the next thing we need to figure out is what can you do reasonably often? So um, we want consistency over intensity. So even a small walk after supper, a small walk after supper, that is fantastic. All that you need for that are a pair of comfortable shoes, and it's something you could do reasonably often. If you're on vacation, you can do it. If you're at a restaurant, after you go to the restaurant, take the long way back to the car. You know, maybe if you're downtown or something, you can take a nice little walk before you get there. It doesn't have to be horrible. It doesn't have to be intense, okay? Um, a couple of things to think about. Certain types of increased movement can also increase your appetite. So depending on what you're doing, if you're taking a walk at a moderate pace, it's not going to increase your appetite. If, however, you add something like HIT or lots of um, so like a high intensity interval training class, if you're adding a lot of weight training and that sort of thing, it can increase your appetite. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to that. Also, you really do want to start slow and progress gradually. Otherwise, first of all, burnout. Second of all, you end up with more soreness and sometimes even injury if you do more than your body is ready for. That soreness sometimes prevents people from continuing. They do a couple of hard workouts and they're like, they can hardly get up the stairs and they say, you know what, that's it. Other people are like, this is working, woo! But there's a, most people don't feel like that. Most people are like, oh, this hurts too much. And then it makes it hard to continue. So what can you do reasonably often? And consistency over intensity, okay? The last thing to think about is mindset. 
So instead of focusing, we spend so much time focusing on what our bodies can't do. What about thinking about for a moment right now, the body that you have this minute, think about what it can do. What kind of awesome adventures has your body taken you on? What kind of amazing places have you walked to? What kind of people have you hugged using your arms? These are all amazing things that our bodies do every single day. We want, we don't want to take those things for granted, right? So our bodies all have a very elaborate, rich, and even traumatic history of illness, injury, healing, and triumph. And we have to honor that when we are looking at adding or increasing movement. Um, and we might think, oh, well, but my body isn't perfect. You know, there's room for improvement. Look at this or whatever it might be. It, it doesn't need to be perfect. Even works of art that are easily regarded as some of our most, most beautiful pieces, like David by Michelangelo, for example, flaws. One might argue that the flaws are what make those works of art even more attractive and more beautiful. So nobody is perfect. That's not what we're striving for. So I'm not saying be happy with the way that your body is and you don't need to work on it because I know many of you are very good at self-criticism and I'm guessing so because I know that I am, but we can be a masterpiece and a work, of pro a work in progress at the same time. So I wonder what would be different if we viewed our bodies in that light. And so instead of criticizing, feeling hatred about some parts of our body, and I, I know that's a strong word, but I, I think that it's appropriate for the way that some of us feel about certain parts of our body. I wonder if instead of that, we replace it with nurturing, caring for, taking care of this amazing body, because we still have lots of adventures to go on right? So how are you already honoring your body through movement? Simple movement. I get out in the garden. I do some gardening. I walk with my kids outside. I get on the floor and I play with my kids. Getting down on the floor and up off the floor, that is, that is, that is something that we take for granted until we can no longer do it. The more we can get up and down off the floor now, today, the more we will be able to do that when we're older. And believe it or not, that increases our lifespan because it reduces our risk of, of injury due to falling. So it might seem like such a small thing, getting down on the floor and getting back up, but that simple movement, that functional movement pattern actually is incredibly valuable. So what are you doing now? What would you like to try? What would you like to try? Here's, here's mine. I'll start first. I've always wanted to formally study martial arts. And I was on my way to doing that when, when we were told we had to stay home. I thought, this is going to be it. I'm finally going to do it. I haven't given up. I'm just, I'm in a holding pattern. I've taken a couple of classes online. And that's a great thing right now, friends. You can explore so many things from the comfort of your house Nobody even has to see you downloading. You can, oh, there are free classes, inexpensive classes, um, and not just movement classes or exercise classes, but like skill building classes, things that you can try that involve movement. So take advantage of all of those. And I'd love to hear, what is it that you would like to try? What does your body like to do? Until next week, keep moving.